Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about accessing arrays indices. So let's jump right into it. So accessing elements of an array. So the array elements are numbered using integer numbers starting at zero. So again, to select a specific type of element in an array or an indice, we have to use a decimal number or a whole number to access each specific array element. So for example, if we were to create an array, again, we use our at symbol followed by the array name. We declare using the Perl identifier. And if it has two values, and let's say, for example, if we only want to select one value from that array, not the entire array, but each individual value of an array. So in Perl, it gives us a way to do that. So we can use a print statement, of course, to print all values in the array. But in order to do this and select only one part of it, it's called an indice. So we have to use a dollar sign, which indicates a scalar value, followed by the array name. And we have to include our, our square braces or our square brackets, followed by the integer number. So again, guys, it starts with zero. And of course, for example, the first value is Jackson. So zero is reference to Jackson. So Jackson is actually the first value of the array, which is array indice zero or subscript zero. And of course, we count up one. So Williams is the second value in the array, which is one. So zero, one and one will reference Williams. So that's pretty much it, how you reference independent or individual element value. So that's how we retrieve a specific value from an array. We just use an indice, which is a whole number to access that value of our array. So let's do some examples for I can show you guys. So the first thing we want to start off with is declaring and setting up our array. So let's define an array and set up some values. So again, we start, start off with our at symbol followed by our array name. I'll call it my underscore array. I'll give it some values. Let's say test one. Well, let's just call it test one for my value. And I'll just give it all strings this time to make it easy. So test one, test two, and test three. And I'll actually add a period. So let me save my work. And what I'll do as well, I'll declare scalar, var scalar variables. So what I'll do here, let's call it array variable one, underscore zero one. And again, remember to retrieve a value from an array or an indice of an array. We have to use the dollar sign to reference a scalar, scalar value. So we type the name of our array followed by our square brackets and the indice number. So again, it, start, it starts off with as zero. So let's say I want to reference the first element, which is zero. And I want to reference the last element, which is test three, which will be indice three. In the indice two, sorry about that. Like I said, zero, one, two. So two is the last, last element inside our array. So again, 
I'll call this array variable two with our indice of number two. So again, an easy way to do this is just count. And like I said, it starts from zero and you can go in the following order. So let's print our values. So we set up a print statement and I'll take my first array variable. Of course, I'll put it in double quotation marks because I love the power of double quotation marks and I'll add my nice new line character and again I'll do the same thing for the second variable and add another new line character so if I'm correct this is well let's not forget our well yeah so if I'm correct it's going to print out <clears throat> test one followed by a period and it's going to print out test three. So we save our work, go up to the menu, click run, run script. And there we have it. Test one and test three. And again, if we even assign, let's say another one to, to test out all three of them, I can do, let's just put this variable in. So I'll do that, paste it in, followed by a new line. So I'll print out all three of them. Give me one second. Always remember to double check the variable name. So I'll run it again, and there we have it. Test one, it should say, it should have printed um, test one, test two, and test three, but give me a second. Test one, test two, test three. Oh, always remember as well, look for your errors. So I'll put this as indice one, and actually, it's good to have errors because you can learn off your mistakes as well, like me, for example, as well. But so again, this is indice one, indice two, indice, indice three, and it references all these values. So again, we save our work and let's see if I set up everything correctly. And there we have it, test one, two, and three. So that's pretty much how we reference some um, indices of elements specifically to retrieve their value and to save them into scalar variables. So if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll see you in next lecture.